uh, roughly that. But they're called patriarchal because they were cultures where men were at the top of the heap and women were fairly at the bottom. Right. <clears throat> so as I began to do the research, information just sort of came and came and came around how sexuality was dealt with and how women were dealt with in these cultures that didn't see women as second-class citizens. And the fact is, sexuality was very connected to spirituality. It wasn't, wasn't ever seen as separate from it. And that women were considered highly sexual beings, and their power of giving birth was honored. And, you know, there was a lot of devotion to the feminine. Right. So that's what inspired me to write. And since then, I have been encouraging, empowering women. I do Awaken Your Inner Goddess seminars. We just do a lot of things to help women reconnect to their divinity. Because that's what got cut out of the picture. Okay, when you talk about getting reconnected to their divinity, a as I understand it, in, in, as part of it, a big part of it in, in your book, uh, what you, what you tr what we do here is we change a viewpoint, but also uh, in doing this, you change the desire or the, and bring desire back for the for the uh, for the sexual act. Is, am I right? It's a little more complicated. What I'm doing is giving women a reason to want to reconnect with their own sexual energy. Exactly, right. You know, uh, the women are bored with, you know, intercourse-based sex. Well, that, that's my point. In other words, <laughs> to, to, you know, to bring that desire back to, to have some kind of a, of a sex life that's better. You know, one thing for sure, if all we got to do is look out there to what's going on, and, and we have, you know, what, 50% attrition in marriages, mm -hmm. you know, today— Something isn't working. I, I, a lot of things aren't working. No, my whole life I've watched it fall apart, not only in the outer world with my friends and family and, and people and relatives, but in my own life. Yeah. Yeah, it just hasn't, it's, it's, you know, something needs to change. And, yeah, for and me as well. I mean, I certainly have a lot of personal experience finding things that did not work. <laughs> right, exactly. Blind, blind alleys are learning what, what doesn't work, and now it's time to learn what does work. But I was always motivated to find a way to make it work. The women that I wrote this book for are the ones that will say, I don't care if I ever have sex again. They're so shut down and turned off, and, and it, to me it's a tragedy. Oh, it's a real tragedy, yeah. yeah. That's, it's, they lose a real vital energy. You, 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 you Exactly. Well, you make a statement in, in your book that says that sexual energy is the most tra powerful transformer available in our bodies. Right. That's a right. huge That's statement. That's in my Huffington Post. <laughs> Right, exactly. That's where the, yeah, okay. it's a transformer of energy. We're basically bringing in and uh, accessing very high states of, um, I don't even know what to call it. I don't know if we have a name for it. Well, well, you know, I, I first encountered this back in, I was like 26 years old. Wow. And, and I read a book, believe it or not, called Think and Grow Rich by oh, yeah. Napoleon oh, yeah. Hill, right? Uh -huh. well, well, that book talked about taking the sexual energy, and I had plenty of it in those days, and transmuting it into whatever you were doing. You, yes. that, that ener and so I, I know that there's real transformation available through that, right. that energy in my own personal experience. Right, right. And it, it can be used for healing. It's used to rejuvenate your own body. But here's the key. When we say these things, people tend to picture a specific act. Sex is something you do with somebody else, and usually it's a very limited thing that you do. Yes. But when we talk about transforming in our bodies, our healing, making it um, powerful for us as human beings, it doesn't have to be partner sex. Right. It doesn't even have to be the kind of thing we think of when we use that word. That's how limiting it's been in the Western culture. Absolutely. It's energy that we can move in our body, and we don't even have to do any kind of self-stimulation for this energy. I mean, you have to practice um pretty high uh it's not meditation it's really working with your body but it's still possible to have all kinds of orgasmic energy without anything that we would recognize in the west as called sex and the real key is to bring your will into this in yes. your intent yes absolutely you know and and for me it's about looking at this whole um wonderful room of treasures that are available so you can have partnered sex when it is connected and it's not being done just to get to sleep or, you know, just to get off, which is what our, where our culture goes with it. So you can have that. You can also have your own spiritual experience with, with self-stimulation. You can also use the energy, run the energy 
as mm. you work with people, as you do, and again, it's not this perverted idea that people have. It's not genital sex. It's really just energy that goes through your body. Right. Yeah. So tell me, w- in order to, to learn how to access that, I, I, would, does that require therapy? Is there, you know, do you have some kind of a, a, a CD, something that, you know, some way that, that uh, people can do this on their own? Absolutely, people. I mean, there, there's plenty of books written about spiritual sex. Some of them are, in my opinion, way too detailed and too arduous to even get through. Right. Um, I do have a CD. I made it specifically for, it's actually meant for women, but the exercise that the sort of middle of, the, there are three guided meditations in the middle one, is instructions with um, uh certain physical movements, breathing, and visualization that actually allows you to access that energy. Okay. And, and, um, and that's available on your website? Yeah, it's available on my website and also Amazon.com. It's okay. called Maiden Mother Wise Woman Reclaiming Our Sexuality. <coughs> okay. And um, David Data, who also uh, writes uh, about spirituality and sexuality, has exercises as well in his book. So well, and, and what's that name again? Uh, his name is David Data. It's spelled D. I-E-A. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. So if you're out there and you're, you're thinking about uh, giving this a try, you want to find out about that energy, there's a couple of sources that, that will help you. You know, one of the things, the other thing, you just said so many really powerful things, things that really spoke to me at any rate, uh, that, that, uh, that I really understand as being true. And that's, that's important. You know, self-help books, there's plenty of them out there that sound like they ought to work, seemed like they ought to work, but by God, they just don't somehow or other really work for us. Yeah. One of the things you said is that every loving relationship is an invitation to transform. Mm-hmm. And it's our task and our joy to accept the mystery and surrender to that experience. What, what, what do you mean by that? Wow. Well, almost every word there definitely needs yeah, a there's a level l- of understanding. Uh, surrender, for example. Let's just take that one. Okay. Um, if it's an experience that you have when you go to sleep, you know, that's a form of surrender. But this kind of surrender has to do with allowing yourself not to have a script, not to be in control, not to have in your head a performance you want to, you know, you're not doing this for anybody else, but you're, you're literally allowing yourself to go deep into an experience. So that's one of the meanings of uh, the several words in there. Right. And then the other is that relationship is in itself a mystery. Oh, I mean, for we sure. have lots and lots of good information and techniques, and I teach them with couples all the time. But ultimately, there's a kind of mystery that we have to let go and allow. You know, it's 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 like the law of attraction. You know, the allowing some things to come to you. Right. The same with relationship. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't work with it, you don't do communication, and you don't do all But ultimately, there's a kind of accepting that this is a, a journey, really. And, uh, and then get fascinated by that. One of the things that I see <coughs> as a, a block for uh, what I think is our, a good many people is because of the, the boredom. Oftentimes, uh, we'll go into a sexual fantasy and not even be with the partner. Mm-hmm. And all of these things, it seems to me, can't work unless we're in the moment and with the person that we're with. Being fully present. Well, here's, here's the deal. I mean, to me, in a long-term relationship, sometimes you can just have a fun sexual experience, and if you want to use fantasy, as long as your partner's aware that that's happening and it's not a big issue between the two of you, Right. that's fine. You know, I mean, let's face it, sometimes we're busy, we don't have the time to create sacred space and and get connected and do all the things that really make um, for a much more transformational experience. Right. So if you're looking at having the time and wanting to really move into a sort of timelessness where you can create this, um, then you have to do some things to make it, make it possible. Right. And one of them is to bring yourself into the present. It means letting go of not only your stuff, but the issues in the relationship. It's, it's really shedding all of that and creating the atmosphere, you know, sort of creating the magic circle. And then when you go into it, you are relating as the essential lover that you are. Right. Then 
all the ways in which you know how to connect, the breathing, the holding each other, the eye-gazing, the allowing each of you to move into a very sacred place and right. your presence. And you're right. In those cases, going into your head and running a fantasy takes you somewhere else. What's